Welcome to TradeTheNBI.com. This is John's report is for the 10th, and, well, we continued with a soft day the other day. Nothing too spectacular with it. Um, what was interesting about those, the day closed with us uh, having the steel dip below the sign, while that seems innocuous as it's heading down there. Uh, just uh, a little bit of weakness, particularly coming after our positive extremes. So, um, well, we can already see in pre-market, we have a little bit of a downdraft. Nothing shocking with that. Um, however, still well below, so nothing has changed with the overall uptrend. We do know that we're going to likely see a retrace of at least this low right here before resuming any move to the upside. How does that impact the daily MBI opus? Well, it doesn't because it took its wins. This is why it added in there the little extra. It just needed a little pop and gave itself the win. Uh, I think that puts this a little shy of equity highs for its entire of course, this one has got a performance all the way back to 2003. Uh, so that's the last 12 months. The current performance graph puts it right there. I think it puts the ultimate high was right there at 1.56. And we're at 1.557. So it's like within a couple thousand of being at the peak levels in what's been a fairly choppy year for it because uh, the way the market has been. Um, this program particularly likes gyration. Some of the continuation moves just is not given uh, as many opportunities to jump into the setups. That's okay, you know. And it's interesting because I had um, I got a couple of emails from people who have uh, been indicator subscribers for a very long time. Uh, we don't really see them on uh, any of the chat or anything, but um, one of them was telling me that uh, he's moved his retirement because he's been using the MBI Opus as well as the 50K here. For retirement accounts moved his retirement of 10 years that's fantastic and like he said at first he used to be terrified that he would wake up you know and the market would have plummeted or something but as he recognizes you got your stop in there and being a 24-hour fluid thing it's not like trading the S&P SPY or something like that um, you know you'll get out of the futures as soon as it's hit so doesn't really become a problem once he got past it. It was an interesting uh, comment because there is a psychology to the idea of people are just terrified of any kind of loss because of the representation that, oh, I've made a mistake or this and that. But the reality is you can blame it on the program. The program's doing its thing. I mean, let's look at where the program is. Um, you know, Not to have traded this thing has been ridiculous is why I keep pointing it out. We look at the periodic returns where we're at for just this year, the current trade that's in. You know, up just under, you know, 80,000 for these last, you know, well, how many days has it been since the 21st? So, you know, a couple of weeks, big deal, a couple of weeks, not that hard out of your life for a couple of weeks to just do nothing but change your stop higher and higher. I know. Tired of hearing it, but unfortunately, it's something that has to be said over and over again, because until the psychology breaks through and you see it enough times, it's that repetitive nature of it that just finally uh, helps people absorb the reality of it, that you have this type of behavior of the market, that it's just a matter of being able to see it at the right uh, moments. Speaking of which, the 5,000 uh, tick chart, it was pretty good. Um, we had the deep red come in here, and then there was the little continuation of it because it continued to have nice rising red. And then when it finally peaked out, it retraced exactly the red, and then we ended up with another deep red. And what happened there? Oh, yeah, that's right. It retraced itself, too. So it's just a matter of waiting for, you know, the fine sell signal, which came right as you crossed over and passed here. And then it just continued south. So we're looking for the turnaround that will take place. It'll be interesting because if it gives a higher uh, red pivot, as well as if the green pivot's higher at this particular point, that will be a nice momentum push back up. So keep that in the back of your head. Looking at the NQ, still finding it already. See, it had its uh, weakness period already marked when this had crossed below. So no surprise to see a little bit of continuation from there. Uh, positive extreme in the exact same spot. No changes with that. And the YM, we already know that it had its uh, short bifractal step in place, uh, but did so without having the um, full configuration of what we would look for for a cell signal because it's more based off the pivot that came off the extreme. However, positive extremes come in, and we know that it's a pretty good likelihood the second version will get the uh, retrace 
you've already had the steel dip below the green, a little dip below the cyan, and you'll have a complete move there. Uh, looking at the euro, you know, this is what's so beautiful about it. Nice pump. All these people start talking dollar. Ooh, you know, everything's wonderful for the euro. And, you know, no. We saw that this popped up. We knew that was just going to continue to fade. And sure enough, what happened? It continued to fade. It's pretty straightforward play. No real difficulty. Now, this is interesting with oil moving up. So the potential is market could continue to have some upside potential to this. Um, decent turnaround on that buy came through here, even on the red candle, and then look at the major gap up with it. Now, that's where you got to be reactive to some of this stuff uh, ahead of time and be able to see it as it's developing. And there was never any good news from TLT with the deep, deep decline setup. In fact, still in deep red, so I'm not expecting anything from bonds at this particular time because there is just no impetus for any inflation at this moment which is a real problem because you don't have that great a growth either. Um, you would think that that might help gold. No, because we get no, um, well, there's real inflation, but they're not measuring the real inflation that's existing out there. And that's going to be coming in food prices um, and as well as in petroleum things, which are excluded from their ideas of, you know, rising inflation. The question is going to be if there's any future uh, difficulties with um Bond issues, things like that, due to further declining economic growth. And that will be uh, the coming headline, uh, particularly this summer. I know that the second quarter is going to be huge on that because uh, they pretty much discounted the first quarter, saying that it was just because of weather. Well, if that doesn't turn around significantly, then you will have panic. I think it's probably the easiest way to describe that. Um, X. Oh, rejection on the crossover. That's not going to be good. CLF, um, yeah, not doing anything. Not doing a thing. Even from its intraday, you can see, well, so far still higher red, but you're going to have to see a new pick, uh, pick up of that. That's still good separation. We could take this rectangle, start it from right over here, and just slide it in place. Always good to see how that uh, plays in and of itself. This is still solid separation. Maybe a little consolidation, but the upside bias is still there for AIG. WLT, nothing again. Every time it gets close to the potential of a crossover with that, gets rejected. Wouldn't look for much there either at this particular moment. And likewise, JCP had its crossover, reverted back, held up pretty decent despite uh, the general um, sell on that. I would look now for um, a continued breakdown of um, red. It's going to make a higher pivot here, which helps. Sustain it if you can get a green pivot. So the key watching where the green goes if it starts up. And it should have some good carry through on that. That would be worth looking at. And now we can look at some of the wonderful alert stocks. You know, got some grief from people. On, I posted this one. Stock twits for everyone. PCLN, dog, heading back to what? Oh, yeah, the positive extreme retrace. Nothing special in the um, call. Uh, we want Apple Daily here. And there you have it, um, bullish, no change, no disbelief, just simple, clear separation when that steel and sign are so far away from anywhere near the red and the white, it's not even close at this particular point. Um, Amazon had a little bit of a turnaround to the upside on that. Uh, the drop of the steel below there, yeah, potential little bit of uh, difficulty with that. Baidu's been on a wonderful tear, had a little bit of a retrace with that, turned it around. No objection there. In fact, that's going to make now a higher pivot. So that means that the next dip below, um, if you get a little bit of a retrace of these positive extremes, will become the next buy signal. Keep that one in mind. Be worth the play. And fast, like I said, financials doing well. Nothing to worry about in the world because banking rules the direction. No, just kidding. <laughs> it's there are periods where there's correlation, but uh, in this particular case, uh, no. Facebook it's got choppy. It's held up very well with the market, uh, despite being in a continued sell. It's going to get into an oversold, but you are making lower peak here with the red. So any of these little pops not likely to hold up very well. Not too concerned about that one. Google has not been the best. Came down, turned around. 
created the next little up pivot with this little slide. Uh, the key will be um, now having to see red move up above there. Uh, but for now, it's been a decent buyer for the last uh, couple of days. Netflix, we'll take a look at that one. It's been a screamer. We loved it from way back over here, and it's just nonstop. Just look up your ABM on that one and just keep trailing it as it goes. It stayed beautifully underneath the red and the white. Very easy to see. Nothing complicated about much of this. Tesla's been, um, yeah, weak at best. Nothing we liked, even from, you know, all the way back here, you had a little bit of an increase. Didn't get much of a decline. This is a lot like what we're seeing with Facebook. You didn't see that deep breakdown. Um, this has just been a lot of support uh, with money. Um, but the breakdown into the lower zone should have reduced uh, exposure for buying a little bit. It did come off a little bit higher pivot than the previous one, but it was quite a spread between the two and didn't quite make the highs. So still continue to make lower highs. Um, still more bearish than bullish on that uh, overall view. And there you had the bearish breakout of uh, Twitter. Um, now is where you would be looking to short the pop setups. Uh, I'd be looking for a rollover on that um, well, very, potentially very soon. I mean, usually to look at the cross, you can go a couple of days. If this makes the higher pivot, though, with the red, um, you'd have to watch out for an up cross because that would turn it around to a new buy. So there we have that. Let us take a look at the alert uh, radar screen. Let's scroll through the numbers here for the S&P. Rather hot here in Italy. Freak 100 degree temperatures for Florence this particular moment. That's okay. It will cool down next week. Gotta love that. A little bit of mixed readings in some of that NASDAQ. That's uh, healthy stuff. A lot of these new cells, uh, something to pay attention to. We went from all that green to now all of a sudden seeing the pop of the cells. It could be a little bit more of a downdraft in some of those. Dow, nothing too uh, dramatic. Uh, it looks more 50 50 like that. It's always pretty good. There you have it in a nutshell. Market doing great. Everybody's happy. And we'll get some potential retrace on the horizon here. So we'll just uh, keep taking it one day at a time, keep adjusting our stops and the plays, go from there. As always, trade well.